V-Dub Gang. It's time we start part one of the big turbo project for the GTI. Quick overview, we are going to work on getting the piston rods put together. That will include ring gapping, installing the rings, and also our integrated engineering rods. We are still waiting for the main cap bolts to come in. As I said before, shipping to Hawaii is terrible. I cannot make this up. We spent $9 on the main cap bolts. Just the bolts now. The shipping was $27. What? What the f So that set us back a bit and we can't bolt the crank to the block, which means the internals aren't going in yet. All thanks to ECS Tuning. We just got the block back from the shop. I don't know if you guys can see, but it got a fresh home deglazed with new cross hatching so it's ready anyways before we get to working on the rings we gotta clean up the pistons take off all this carbon buildup and gunk we got some heavy duty oil degreaser now we just gotta soak it and scrub the shit out of it Look at that. This shit looks new. Moving on, we're gonna start working on our piston ring end gaps before we put them onto the piston. To do all that, you need three tools. We got a ring gap filer. This is a Proform manual ring filer. Feeler gauges. Now this tool is optional. It is a piston ring squaring tool. You could just use the piston to square in the rings, but with this tool, you don't need to worry about your rings being uneven. And it sets the rings at a reasonable distance in the cylinder, which is about 5 eighths of an inch. They mentioned this in the Bentley manual. I will post the link for you guys in the description so that you can download the full manual in PDF form. The ring end gaps for the 1.8T AWD engine code is as follows from top to bottom. Make sure that you're following your engine code because they are different. So for our top compression ring for the AWD, we got 0 0.15 to 0 0.40 millimeters. Ring number two is our bottom compression ring, got between 0 0.15 to 0 0.40 millimeters. And our third and last ring, which is the oil scraper ring, should be gapped between 0 0.25 to 0 0.50 millimeters. Let's start with our first ring and pressing it into the cylinder with our squaring tool. Then we'll measure the ring end gap with our feeler gauge. Here we got our ring filer all set up and stable. All you gotta do is screw it down or clamp it so it doesn't move. If your ring has markings, it will tell you which is the top. Here's an important thing. You are only gonna be filing one side of the gap with the top of the ring facing up. On your ring filer, there will be two stubs. You're gonna set the ring against them at the same time and then rotate the ring so that only one side contacts the filing wheel. When you crank the wheel, make sure you are turning it in one direction only. The tool allows two directions, but the easiest way to remember is to rotate it towards you. Now all you're going to do is put some pressure on the ring and crank it. Now you don't want to go too crazy on the filing. You just want to do it in small increments, maybe 5 to 10 rotations at most.
And after those five rotations, you're gonna wanna constantly check by putting the ring back in the cylinder and measuring the end gap. Now that the ring is up to specifications, we're gonna do the same exact process to the other rings. One eternity later. All the rings are finally done. I got everything written down, triple checked, and as close as possible to each other. Now time to put them onto the piston. Installation goes from bottom to top, so the oil scraper ring goes first, then the second compression ring, and then the first compression ring. Here we got the spacer, we're gonna put this on first. And you want to line up the open end directly above the wrist pin hole. Since there are two rings for this groove, you're going to put one ring at the top of the spacer to the left and about an inch away from the wrist pin hole. Guide the ring around the piston and above the spacer. When it is all done, just make sure the spacer is not overlapping each other. The second ring will be placed at the bottom of the spacer, but this time to the right of the wrist pin hole at about an inch away as well. Guide the ring around and make sure the spacer is not overlapping. The rest of the rings are easy, just make sure the top is facing up and use your tool to spread it onto the piston. Up next we got our IE rods. There are no specific instructions on which way they go onto the piston, but here's what I'll be doing. On the rods, they have numbers marked at the lower end and on the rod cap. I will be referencing these markings as the front, so they will be installed facing the front of the engine, which on the piston is with this notch on the head. Simple and easy process. The rod goes in, the wrist pin for the piston goes in the same way it came out, and the circlip to lock it in place. Putting the circlip can be a bit tricky, Easiest way I found was to place one end in the groove and the other open end close to the open notch. From there you guide the open end into the notch and you should be able to push around the clip into the groove. After it's in, rotate the open end about 180 degrees from the notch. That's pretty much it for part one guys. Next up, assembling the block. So stay tuned, hit that like, subscribe, and notifications button. Mahalo guys for watching. See you guys on the next one.